had the second round, final round of the elections in France, and it was um, a shocker, a shocker primarily uh, to, I mean, it was a shocker to the French. The French uh, uh, voted in in ways that are completely uh, unexpected, in a sense, or or unexpected by most of the polling and most of everybody else. But as soon as the exit polls came out, it was obvious. Uh, if you remember, the, there was a lot of panic about Marie Le Pen winning this. The national rally would maybe even have a majority. They'd have 50 percent of, of parliament and they would form the next government. And there was panic not just in France, but all over Europe about this potential. And uh, it didn't happen. It didn't happen uh, in, in a big way. That is, Le Pen actually only received 143 seats, which, uh, which is well below the 280-something that you need for a majority. And it was actually the third most achieved by any political party. The uh, 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 leftist alliance, which was an alliance of four different left-wing political parties from kind of uh, uh, what you'd call moderate left all the way to nutty left, uh, won the most seats in the parliament, 182. Macron got 168 seats, and Le Pen only got 143 seats. Now, that's still like double what she had before, so it's still a huge increase in terms of um, for Le Pen. We'll get to that in a minute. But it was very disappointing, given she ex they expected double. They literally got 50% of the seats that they expected. And, and the reason for this uh, is, is uh, you know, quite evident. That is, what happened was that in the French election, the first round, you can have as many candidates you want, they run, and then the top three, there might be some minimal requirement, but basically the top three then go on to the next round. And uh, then the winner of that round goes to parliament. That is, they don't need 50%. It's just the top three. What happened was, in every district where, or in 200 districts, where Le Pen's, uh, uh, Le Pen's candidate uh, had a significant chance of winning, and uh, there was a leftist and a Macron candidate, one of the two uh, did not run. So basically, the opposition, Macron and the left, coalesced around a strategy that made it one-on-one -on -one against Le Pen. And the reality is that one-on-one -on -one against Le Pen, in most places, even in France, Le Pen's political party loses. That is, she wins when the anti, uh, you know, new right vote is split. But when it's united, the anti-right vote, she loses. So, for example, let's say in one district uh, there was a, a leftist and a Macron candidate running against one of Le Pen's candidates. And let's say the Macron candidate, who's a centrist, uh, center-left, center-right, kind of center. Let's, let's say, um, let's say uh, the Macron candidate withdrew, leaving just the leftist and the Le Pen. What happened then is all the Macron supporters strategically were asked to vote for the leftist, even though they are not leftist. And you can see the same might have happened if the leftist candidate had withdrawn. Then the left called for its voters to vote for the Macron candidate in order to unseat or in order to prevent the Le Pen candidate from winning. So uh, what, what you had here was basically a coalition between Macron and the left in order to stop Le Pen, and it worked. What is interesting is, if, if you think about the British election, the, uh, the Labour Party won an overwhelming majority of the seats in Parliament, with only 33, 34% of the vote. Macron, her political party, got 37% of the vote, but only 143 seats in parliament, 
Whereas the left, the far left, got 12% or 11% less than the far right. 12% less than the far right. But they won 182 seats, 40 seats more. Now I know Andrew Traeger is going to come on and say, you are, and you're giving us too much detail. Stop giving us so much detail. <laughs> Maybe skipping the segment, knowing that I'll, I'll give you tons of detail. Anyway, um, Le Pen got uh, more votes, fewer seats, because of the way the parliamentary system works in France. The left got significantly fewer votes than Le Pen and got 40 more seats. Macron got even less than the left, and it got, he got more than the right and less than the left, so he got in the middle. Anyway, what you have right now in France is a completely split, divided uh, parliament. Uh, a lot of people are calling foul because uh, the left and Macron uh, got together uh, to go after the right, but that's how politics works, so uh, that is... Uh, I don't know why you would call it foul. MAGA is pretty upset. They wanted Le Pen to win, obviously. Uh, just to give you a sense, Marie Le Pen's party got over 10 million votes. They got over 10 million votes. The socialist communists got 7 million votes. Macron got 6.7 million votes. And yet Macron and the socialist communists got more seats each than Le Pen did. And that's because of the way the parliamentary system works. And people complain about the difference between um, the popular vote and the, um, what do you call it, uh, the college uh, in, in America. You, you, can, you can win the popular vote but lose the presidency. Here, you, you can overwhelmingly win the popular vote and still lose parliament. And, uh, and that's, that's what we have. So... Um, we have a very, very divided, we have a very, very divided uh, French parliament. It's not clear how it governs. It's not clear what happens from here. Uh, while this was incredibly disappointing for the far right, for Marie Le Pen, uh, for all of those, the reality is that they have come a long way. In 2007, Le Pen's political party got less than one-tenth of one percent of the vote for parliament. In 2012, five years later, they got four percent. In 2017, they got nine percent. In 2022, they got 17 percent, two years ago. And over the last two years, two years, they have more than doubled the support they have within France. They now have 37% of Frenchmen voted for Marie Le Pen's um, National Rally political party. So while they were incredibly disappointed, and a lot of that disappointment has to do with expectations set up by the polls that basically looked at the national support, 37%, and extrapolated that into seats, and it looks like they were going to sweep. The reality is it doesn't work that way. It never does. And uh, they, they, they underperformed their expectations, and they are pretty crushed. Uh, they are pretty crushed by that. Uh, it's going to be interesting what happens uh, to Le Pen moving forward, right? At this rate... Uh, in uh, when the presidential elections come around, she will dominate. Uh, uh, you know, we'll talk about the left in a minute, but she will dominate. Uh, she is, uh, particularly if uh, the French economy continues to stagnate, uh, particularly if uh, concerns about the Islamic immigration and the lack of assimilation and the violence uh, in the Islamic neighborhoods continues then she will just continue to gain votes. She will continue to gain votes uh, if that is the case. But we will see. We will see. Not, not, not clear. Uh, so by far, the, 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 the far right in France 
is the most popular political party in France. 37% of the vote versus 20, what did I say, 23, 24, I closed that window already, uh, by the far left. It just, the strategy of the left and Macron to deny them seats in the parliament worked and uh, the National Front will have to, or Alliance or whatever they call themselves, will have to rethink how they uh, enter uh, parliamentary politics next time to try to try to translate the popular vote into a uh, legislative vote. So what happens now in the French parliament? Oh, before we do that, all right, before we do that, let's talk about the left for a minute. Um, yesterday, or, or during the day, as the vote was happening, store owners all over Paris kind of uh, 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 reinforced their windows. They, they put up uh, wood and, and uh, all kinds of reinforcement because the feeling was, the sense was, that the right was going to win and that the left was going to riot and, uh, and there would be a lot of destruction and there would be a lot of property damage as a consequence of the left rioting because the far left in France is uh, violent and uh, it, it's a combination of Antifa and Muslims and uh, the, the, the real... The, the fear was that they were going to create a lot of damage. What happened was the far right lost. That is, the far left actually won. And they still rioted. It doesn't matter. The, the, the principle with the far left is no matter what the outcome is, we riot. We, we, we break windows. We uh, loot stores. We burn stuff down. We, you know, we riot because that's what we do. We're, we're, we're leftists. We learned that with BLM. We just go riot no matter who wins. It's just our mode of celebrating and it's our mode of objecting. It's our mode of existence, violences. So uh, the far left rioted yesterday in Paris. In addition, uh, of course, the, 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 um, the, the leftists took this as a big um, mandate as a big uh, mandate for their agenda, which obviously it's, uh, it is not, right? Uh, because they, got, they did not get a lot of the votes. They got under 25% of the votes. Uh, but uh, Jean-Luc Melchon, who is the, um, the head of one of the four factions within the... The other thing about the left is it's four different political parties that united in order to beat in order to get these seats in parliament. No one of those four factions are particularly powerful, are particularly strong. They have 182 seats, but they don't have a lot of political power as a consequence. And Jean-Luc Melchon, who is getting all the press and he's the most vocal, he actually ran for president last election and didn't do well. Uh, Jean-Luc Melchon is now taking a victory, a victory tour around. He is promoting himself as the victorious. Uh, his party called Unconquered France is a far left wing party. It's a party that uh, hates Macron, uh, thinks Macron is uh, too much of a free marketer, too much of a capitalist. Uh, he uh, uh, rejects uh, supporting Ukraine, is demanding that France uh, uh, force Ukraine and Russia into some kind of peace uh, compromise, which means Ukraine giving up uh, significant territory. Uh, he is a hater of Israel, a, uh, a, an explicit supporter of, um, uh, of uh, Hamas. Uh, uh, Michon is a really, really, really uh, bad guy. And um, it is, again, one of the four factions. Another faction, uh, the socialist faction, is actually led by uh, the ex-president of France, Holland. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, even though they're called the socialists, they're actually the more moderate leftists. They're not the far crazy left. When, f f uh, when Holland uh, was president of France not that long ago, uh, it wasn't like France went all nationalizing everything. Uh, he, he, he governed from very much from the center while he was president. So, I mean, the center is pretty bad, particularly in France, which is already way to the left. 
uh, but it, but but it was a coalition of more traditional center left parties with wacky, crazy um, left wing parties. There are also a spattering of uh, uh, very small political parties uh, uh, that won some crazy leftists, some uh, 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 people who thought uh, Le Pen and uh, her political party were too moderate on the right, so some crazy rightists as well. Uh, so you do have a, a wide array of uh, small political parties that when you maybe go one seat or so in, in there as well. Also the uh, traditional conservative political party, uh, Charles de Gaulle's political party in France, had a, a, a very poor showing, uh, but, but they're in there as well, right? They're in there as well as maybe the fourth largest political party, but, but by a big distance uh, from the other three main blocks uh, a party. Uh, the leftists are a pretty crazy anti-Semites. I mean, this is the challenge you had in uh, France, is both the far right and the far left, uh, for, for Jews uh, are, are unbelievably um, unbelievably uh, anti-Semitic. I, I, think, uh, I think anybody who cared about anti-Semitism uh, could only vote for Macron. There was really nowhere else to hide. Um, uh, the Paris chief rabbi uh, yesterday, uh, or, or once the election results were announced, said, it is clear today that there's no future for Jews in France. I tell anyone who is young to go to Israel or a more secure country. So uh, basically, you've got the two largest political parties, or, or not the two largest, but almost the two largest political parties in France, both share a, an element of anti-Semitism, uh, of anti-Semitism. The, the left in, um, in, in France is also dominated by Muslims. Uh, so you're going to see Islamists voting for the far left because the Islamists are allied with them. Uh, as uh, the uh, uh, French philosopher Bernard-Henri Lévy wrote, uh, the left is once again kidnapped by the infamous Merchon, divisive language, hate of the Republic on the lips. Around him right now are some incarnations of the new anti-Semitism. A chilling moment, a stain continues to fight against these people. And uh, journalist Johan Taib, uh, Melchon's victory is a terrible signal of impunity sent to an anti-Jewish Islamo-fascist, sent to the anti-Jewish Islamo-fascist. In other words, this is a great victory for the Islamo-fascist. You're seeing the left, the far left, draw swastikas in Paris. Um, so, you know, Jews... Um, uh, I, I interviewed yesterday on my show in Hebrew, I interviewed a uh, member of parliament uh, from, uh, from Israel, a, 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 a Sharin Heskel. She's one of the few classical liberals in the Israeli parliament. And, and I interviewed her yesterday, and she was excellent. She was excellent. She, you know, basically um, everything uh, to do with, um, uh, with how to deal with Iraq, uh, how to deal with Gaza, and how to deal with Hezbollah and all of that. We were completely aligned. She was really, really good. Uh, her criticism of Bibi was excellent. And, um, uh, and uh, in addition, uh, what else? Um, in addition, she told the story of, of anti-Semitic attacks in uh, Paris by Muslims. Uh, and she says, uh, since October 7th, anti-Semitic attacks in France have gone through the roof. The numbers are, are just unbelievable. Uh, the, uh, her grandmother was uh, beaten by an 85-year-old grandmother, uh, or maybe 88. Anyway, in, in her 80s, late 80s, was beaten by four Muslim thugs. Um, uh, she unfortunately lives in an area which is now dominated by these Muslims. The, her grandmother was in hospital. She survived, but was in hospital. But this is just a, a symptom. She is telling French Jews, you cannot stay in France. France is just, it, 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 it's just not hospitable to Jews. It's not going to be hospitable to Jews. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the Muslims, the, the Islamofascists, the Islamists in France 
uh, completely out of control. Uh, and uh, they are now going to be emboldened by the victory of the left, while the only political party that wants to do anything about the Muslims in France, about the Islamists in France, is uh, the far right, the Marie Le Pen's party. And Marie Le Pen's party has a history, even though they're claiming they've changed and all, but they have a history of being rapidly, of being anti-Semitic. So you can't win right now in France, no matter who wins in the distant future. Uh, uh, you know, the, the Jews in France are really finished. Uh, you know, we've already seen significant immigration from France uh, to Israel. Most French Jews have, a, uh, have bought at least a place in Israel so they can escape to. I, I think you're going to see the emptying out of France from its Jewish population. And this is exactly why I have said, continue to say, that I support the existence of uh, Israel as a place for Jews to escape too. So the, the kind of uh, immigration policy that Israel has, that all Jews uh, can come with, with basically minimal screening, um, is the right policy. It is in a, a Jewish state in that Jews still need a place of self-defense. Where are these Jews going to go to? Germany, uh, London, where, you know, where, where the police won't protect the Jewish community from... Uh, the Islamists, where exactly are they supposed to go? Uh, the only home they have is Israel. Not exactly the safest place in the world, um, but it is a place with a military that is dedicated uh, to protecting them, uh, to protecting their lives. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah. So just in terms of what happens in the French parliament, hard to tell. Uh, Macron is going to try to form a coalition. He's going to try to bring in, he's going to try to cause the left to splinter, take the more moderate elements of the left. He's going to try to get the conservatives on board, maybe a sprinkling of smaller political parties. I don't know that he can pull together enough people, but maybe he can form some kind of minority government that uh, will... Uh, will govern, won't be able to do anything dramatic, won't be able to do anything substantial, but maybe he can uh, form enough of a, um, of a, 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 you know, sizable enough within the parliament to do something. Uh, but basically, I think the, the, the view is, and I think this is the right view, is that uh, you've got complete dysfunction in, uh, within government in um, in France, and it is uh, going to be a complete disaster moving forward. And the more it's disastrous, the more the uh, the right, the more Marie Le Pen's political party will gain strength. Um, Thirty-seven percent this time, forty-five percent next time. Maybe maybe we're heading towards a fifty-one percent day where they just dominate French politics.